Hi everyone, it's Sarah, the owner and creator of Multivarious Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, please feel free to subscribe below and hit the notification bell if you haven't already done so, um, and you'll be notified when I do post new videos. So uh, let's get right into um, works in progress. And um, I guess this is kind of a shop update. <clears throat> so what I've been doing, because <laughs> I have some very unique colors in my shop on multifariousnature.com and I know a few people have kind of wondered, you know, what they would look like knit up. And I thought, well, gosh, yeah, that's a really good point and I probably should knit some up. I am not a big fan of swatches, mainly because um, I know people do that, <laughs> but it's just like there are these little things to try to keep track of and frankly, I don't find that very useful where, um, you know, someone, actually my mom, so my mom, she had mentioned to me, um, the idea of making like a scarf or a blanket with, um, all of my colors that are in my shop. And that would be like the swatches, right? So that's what I'm doing. So, oh yeah, by the way, I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> This water, and <laughs> it's flavored water. Um, I drink a lot of water. I drink water all the time, and sometimes it just gets a little bit boring. I'm like, I'll put lemon in it, you know, if I'm feeling really healthy. <laughs> but sometimes I just want something else in there, just to add some flavor instead of just plain water all the time. And I try to stay away from a lot of sugar if I can. <clears throat> So I discovered this one at my local food store. I don't know if, if they carry it at your local food stores. Um, I'm sure there might be something like it. And it's called, uh, it's a liquid water enhancer is what they call it. It's stir. And I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like. But they're just like these little, you know, little water enhancers. And it doesn't have sugar in it. It's just, um, it has citric acid. You're like a... a concentrated fruit juice and then um, it's the stevia ash extract is what gives it the sweetness and I a lot of the teas that I like that are um, I think yogi tea is one of them I'm pretty sure that's the name of it <laughs> I have a couple that are that uh, brand and it's very flavorful and it's sweet it just adds a little bit of sweetness and it's the stevia leaf which is a natural sweetener so I don't know just in case you were looking for something to make your water taste a little more unique. This one's like a blueberry, yeah, uh, blueberry and blackberry blend, which is really good. I've had a strawberry watermelon one, which I really liked, but it's really, really good. <laughs> Sorry. All right. That was a weird side tangent. Anyway, so what I'm doing to make my swatch thing, I'm kind of making a blanket. <clears throat> It'll probably be more like a scarf. Um, probably a very wide scarf. <laughs> but So I'm sure many of you have heard of it. If you haven't yet, you should definitely check it out. Um, I purchased it. And it's Northeasterly. It's by uh, Skinanigans. Um, <clears throat> Melissa Alexander Loomis is the designer and she's on Ravelry. I will of course include the link below to her pattern on Ravelry, but um, I've heard of it a lot. Uh, quite a few people that I follow on YouTube uh, have done and or currently working on the Northeasterly pattern and it's a blanket. But the really cool part is it's completely customizable. So it's excellent for scraps, which is kind of perfect. Now granted I am using full size skeins, so I'm just using like a little bit of a full size skein to make each section. But you can um, make your sections as big or as small. If you have scrap yarn, like I mean not even 10 grams of a mini skein or something, or a mini skein, you know, 47 yards or something, 20 grams or 10 grams, you can make this blanket and just completely uh, make it however you would like. So, I mean, just to give you an idea, uh, there are definitely a lot of pictures online, but I'm just going to kind of zoom in here on the picture here. This is of, on her pattern, and you can see all the different colors, and um, 
that's that I just love that so that's what I'm doing with my skeins so um, I actually have them um, excuse me wound up so that you can kind of see what they look like wound up instead of just uh, in a skein twisted up in the skein so the twisted up skeins are of course pictured on my website but if you want to see some of them wound up, I actually did that the other day with my ball winder. Oh my word, it takes so much time out of the winding process. I can't get over it. So highly recommend it if you have anything that is fingering weight and 100 grams because it saves you so much time. Um, so this is the Red Dragon Maple. So you can see it's skinned up on the website, but this is what it looks like when it is wound up into a cake. So that's Red Dragon Maple. And then if you want to see it knit up <laughs> in garter stitch, this is the, how the pattern is, it's a garter stitch. Here is Red Dragon Maple knit up. It's quite beautiful. You can see all the variations. Now granted, of course your pattern's gonna look a little different based off whatever you are knitting. Um, if you're knitting really long, uh, sections like in a shawl or something it might be less condensed color it will be it will be less condensed things like this the black will probably be more like little little speckles here and there across if you're doing like a really long row um, where these are very short rows I mean it's 15 stitches I think about it's about 15 or so stitches so it's a very very small amount of stitches so that's why I want to go back you know backtracking and it'll overlap. So it definitely depends on the uh, size of your rows, the amount of stitches that you're going back and forth that the pattern it will create. But it just gives you a little bit of an idea as to what that looks like in the up. So that again is Red Dragon Maple. Beautiful red and it has um, like really dark purple in there and black. Absolutely gorgeous. Love it, love it. I was really excited to see it knit up. I kind of figured it would look that way. And um, the neat part too, you guys, like when you see this, when you start seeing some of these colors knit up, if I dye other colors that are kind of similar in the design where the, the way that the um, variegation is and stuff, you, you will get an idea of how it will knit up. So that's kind of my goal with this, is just to kind of help you see what it would look like potentially if you used it. Um, of course, like I said, it'll be different based off of your pattern that you're using um, <clears throat> or if you use two skeins together. So if you, like if you knit a sweater and you use this in a sweater and you use two skeins, so you um, alternate it like every two rows with a different skein, it would give you a different pattern because you'd have kind of overlap. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not explaining that terribly well, but depending on what you're doing, your technique and everything, it's going to definitely vary the way that it looks. But that's Red Dragon Maple. So I've only knit a few of these into the Northeasterly so far, <laughs> but um, I can at least show you the caked up version. So um, the color I'm using in between all of my colors is just a very neutral color that I, I uh, dyed up. This was a complete accidental. And I don't know if you can see it in here. You probably can't. Oh yeah, there's one. Perfect. <laughs> I was trying to make a really nice neutral and it failed. So the colors that I mixed to make this color, I now have a pre-mixed dye of a color similar to this that I can now use instead of making it from scratch. The issue with making it from scratch is you're using lots of different colors together and as you could see, uh, I could show it again, but where that like that little blue patch was, yeah, there we go, that blue speckle, it's because that dye separated and when it breaks then you get like that color there. So that's not ideal. But this is a nice neutral so I figured it would go well between like all the colors and I'm only using a little of it between each color. so. This skein should go a long way. I should also mention that this is on my, it's a merino nylon blend. That's what this one is. Okay, 
Next, so there's my neutral in between. And then this one is caramel corn. So that is that beautiful um, maple color with some uh, golden yellow in there, browns throughout. And here's what it is caked up. And then again, you can see the skein on the website. So it looks like caked up. So this is caramel corn. And again, this is what it looks like knit up in garter stitch. So it's knit back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, and then the next one that I'm gonna be working on is gray merle. So here it is caked up. Ah, and I keep forgetting to mention bases, sorry guys. So this is the alpaca, my um, alpaca blend. So it's 20, 60, 20, so 20% super fine alpaca, 60% uh, merino and superwash merino, and then 20% uh, nylon. Super, super soft, um, as you can see. And so is this one. This is also that same base. And it's, oops, I'm showing you the wrong side. <laughs> That's attractive looking. But it's very pretty and it was very soft to knit with. So it's really nice. So this is the Peruvian, the Highland 100% um, Peruvian wool. So this is the rustic base that I carry. So it uh, takes color very nicely. As you can see the black and grays and even that like grayish blue coloring. It's very uh, like rich, it's rich. It takes color super well and um, adds great depth. So this is fluffier. It should definitely, um, when knit up, it should bloom as they call it. So once you wash it, it will take up any space, like air gaps and such. So um, I'm excited to work with it because I haven't worked with it yet. And I literally, I don't really have much to show you. This is it right here. So I literally just started using that. And these are size two needles, so they're very small. And I'm just starting to knit with that colorway. Um, and you can see I put that nice tote between. It's a really nice pattern, guys, because like as you're knitting, because that's the thing that would be kind of a detriment, is that you're, okay, you're putting a lot of colors together and then you have to weave in all those ends. Well, she shows you how um, you can weave in the ends as you go. So that these ends, I just need to cut. I've woven them in already as I knitted, so. It just makes it really, really convenient so that you're not constantly um, going to have to weave in ends. So yeah, I really like it. I like the pattern a lot. I, I think it's a great way that I can show off the colors. They'll all be um, in one thing. I might just do a couple rows. It just depends on how many colors I make. And the neat part is you can just kind of, I'm assuming, um, what you do is you do like rows of it and then you can attach them and you, you knit you attach it as you go up that side, so you can just keep making it wider and wider, um, and you kind of figure out your length first. I think you could just figure it out as you go. Is what basically when you like when you figure out okay, I want to stop, then you would bind off, and then that's it, and then you do the next row. So I think I went over all. Oh, one more color that I've I've uh, wound up. I still have, of course, a lot more that I need to do, but I was trying to work with like the. Um, variegated yarns that I have before I do the solids because I feel like the solids don't really need to be knit up. <laughs> they're um, they're tonal, they're semi-solids, most of those colors. So, I mean, they're not really going to look different than skeined up or wound up. So I felt like it was the variegated ones that I think would be beneficial to knit up, that's for sure. So. Um, this one is Electric Blue Raspberry. So this is the one that is nice and like almost a teal blue and that lovely turquoise color in there and white. And 
this one is um, the my I'm pretty sure it's the 5050. It's definitely a silk and superwash merino blend. It has that beautiful sheen to it. It's got a nice sheen and super super soft, slippery. This would make a gorgeous shawl, this base. So yes, that is the electric blue raspberry. I'm looking forward to knitting that one up. So yeah, guys, that's my uh, my next project. I know I said I was gonna work on a sweater and I will be working on a sweater. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I got sidetracked because um, I really wanna go through my stash. I really, really do because it's not really a stash per se. I didn't necessarily gather a lot of these. A lot of them were gifted to me and I'm so grateful for it. Um, but they, it takes up space and then, you know, there's not really room for, for new items unless I'm using it right away. So most of the yarn I buy, actually all of the yarn that I buy is usually for a project that I'm current, I'm going to be working on. So just like that rustic yarn that I, um, the uh, Pluta Lopi, purchase that to work on a sweater. So that is why. I have that and then I'm definitely going to work on a sweater shortly and um, I will keep you guys updated with that as well but um, yeah I, I went I got sidetracked because I really wanted to um, work with the yarn that I'm making and show you guys so that way you can see and um, if you decide then you want to uh, gift it or purchase it then you at least maybe have a better idea of what it might look like knit up so my other works in progress. So that was the Northeasterly with uh, Multifarious Nature Yarn. So all of those colors can be found, um, except for this one, uh, all of those colors can be found on my website. And um, now the other work in progress is the Pinewood sweater. Um, let's see here. So I did get quite a bit done on it. Um, let's see, I gotta find my progress keeper somewhere around here. There we go. So I'm pretty certain this is where I was last week. Um, well, by last week, actually two weeks, because you guys didn't see, really see me last week. It was pre-recorded. So I had stopped at the little uh, color work section prior. Because there's my progress keeper. It's by the armpit. Um, but now I did a bunch of stocking knot, which is the base, uh, the base color. And now I am starting, that's where you see all of these stitch markers. I am starting to do the, um, it's like a, it's a pattern. It basically kind of looks like little trees. And it's about four inches or so of pattern. So Otherwise, if you look at this, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, it's like a cropped sweater. Um, but there's actually going to be another couple inches because I literally just started the patterning down here. So you really can't even see it very well. But it, it give, it's creating this um, tree-like look because of the way the stitches are. So those four inches will give it some nice length and then... I'm um, pretty sure that it, then I get to the end and I bind off and then I will work on the sleeves. So I will see how long I'll make the sleeves. Um, I'm, I like three quarter sleeves, but because this is a very warm sweater, this is definitely really warm because this is rustic yarn, this is Icelandic wool. So it's definitely going to be a warm sweater and I just don't like to be cold. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I'm, I'm probably going to make it a um, not a cropped sleeve. I don't know if that's the correct term. Is it like, is that considered a cropped sleeve? If you know what that term is, when it just comes like just to your wrist, please let me know. Because <laughs> I, I just call that like a cropped sleeve, or I don't know. But that's what I'm that's what I'm looking for is a cropped sleeve. So you can see, I'm pretty sure I measured it. So I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a good length that it's going to be, it's going to hit me where I want it because right now it's pretty much, 
um, to my hip and that does not include the additional four inches. So, um, yeah, I'm really liking it so far, guys. Really liking it. And I kind of stopped on it a little bit this week and started working more on my northeasterly. Actually, I did that yesterday. So there's a testament. So if you're trying to work on a blanket, um, I know I completely get it that, um, everybody knits different speeds and a lot of it is the amount of time that you have to put towards it. So, I mean, and not even that, it's like making that the priority, right? So, I mean, if you have a lot of things going on in your life that take up a lot of your time and, and they rightfully so are your priorities, then that's probably why you're not going to be able to focus on knitting as much. I try to fit it in as much as I possibly can because it is uh, my therapy, I guess. It's my way of coping right now with a lot of the craziness going on in the world and um, being at home so much. And uh, yeah, so I knit whenever I can. I usually knit in the morning um, while, or like after I eat breakfast, <laughs> maybe while I'm eating breakfast, I will knit. And then um, I definitely knit on my lunch break. Oh, the Leander shawl, which I didn't show you guys in this episode because it's in my car and I just frankly don't want to go out and get it because <laughs> it's freezing and we have a, basically have a snowstorm going on. It's been going on since Friday, so three days now. Take that back. Three, like three and a half days because it started Thursday. So we have quite a bit of snow coming down and it's very, very cold. I just didn't want to go outside and get it. So, but I did only do a little bit on it, um, cause currently, uh, that is my, my lunch knitting and I only knit on it when I go into the office for work. And so that's only Tuesdays and Thursdays at the moment. So just twice a week. And then the other three days, I'm so grateful, um, and blessed that I get to work from home. So, um, um. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I get to work from home. And then I tend to work on other projects that are here, like my sweater, or now, <laughs> the um, Northeasterly, where I can do my swatches for my colors. And that way you guys can kind of see what it, they're like knit up. So I'm really excited about that. I think that's gonna work really well. And um, I can put uh, then pictures up also, so there'll be other pictures with the uh, skein on my website. I'll now be able to show you the wound yarn and then also, um, or caked up yarn, and then the knit up little swatch. I can take a photo of that. So that'll, I think, be really helpful for everybody. And I'm trying to think of what else to show you guys this week. I did a lot more knitting last week, uh, the, the, like the week prior. And then this past week, I just wasn't really feeling it that much. So I didn't really get to do much knitting this past week. Um, I'm sure we all have those moments, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but I was definitely doing a bit yesterday and it was really, and I have to say, um, it's really nice to work on the, uh, work with my yarn because I, I love dyeing it. I absolutely love dyeing it and I have so much fun doing that. And it's neat to see it in that schemed up finished pro finish product um, ready to be used for something else. But I think it's so nice um, to then actually be able to work with it and see like what it looks like when you can turn it into something. So um, yeah, I'm just really, really excited about this. And I hope you guys are too. <laughs> and I hope you're, you're enjoying that. I'm looking forward to seeing more of it because you will. <laughs> and... Um, like I said, I will be working on a sweater. Uh, I actually ordered a bunch more yarn, um, yarn bases, and I should be getting those in the next week here. So I'm really excited about that because then I can dye up some more yarn <laughs> and, uh, have more projects in the, uh, in the works here to be done. And it's just exciting and busy time. So, <laughs> um. Hope you guys are, are staying well and uh, 
I hope you're I hope you're happy. I hope you're creating. I hope you're doing something you love. I hope you're uh, able to do something that brings you joy and um, and and brings what joy to others. Because I you know I think it's such a beautiful thing to be able to share things that you're passionate about with others and and uh, perhaps you know spark some uh, creativity and. Um, and just joy, you know, be able to share that with others. I think that uh, we could all use a bit more of um, these days, that's for sure. So I think I'll leave you guys with that. And uh, yeah, <laughs> if you guys are working on any fun projects, please share below in the comments. I would love to hear about it and I'm sure others would too. Um, and any patterns you're working on, um, always love to hear about new patterns and uh, well from other youtubers that I've watched that's how I found out about that northeasterly and it's absolutely gorgeous and I was really excited because it's so versatile you can just do all kinds of things and if you actually watch some of her YouTube videos that um, skinanigans she actually uh, shows you how you can make these patterns just completely random where um, like this section where it is a I'm making large because they're swatches but like this section here for example she would knit like up to here with however much she had left of a color and then she would knit the rest in a different color and then the rest in another color and then she'd get to the end and then she'd use her maybe a base color and it goes between them and it, but it's just they're all so different so it just it can be completely customizable and I absolutely love that and I think that's an excellent way to use your scraps and the really cool other cool thing about this pattern I'm really raving about it because I'm enjoying it so much. Um, <laughs> is that um, it is customizable in the sense of the weight as well. I mean, you can really do it, excuse me, with any weight of yarn, but um, it's designed for fingering weight as well as decay. And the other thing about decay uh, is, I think I'm pretty sure, um, putting two uh, skeins of fingering weight together is considered the gauge for decay. So this is, I'm doing the fingering weight because I'm just doing one skein. Um, but if you did two of them held together, that would be like a decay. So it's a little bit of a heavier weight um, where, you know, lace weight held together double is like your fingering weight. So it's such a pretty pattern. I totally screwed it up here and there. Like there's, I screwed that one up and I screwed it up somewhere down here too. <laughs> but you know, I, I just figure it doesn't really matter because frankly this is just so you can see the colors so I don't really care if it's perfect um, I just really wanted you guys to be able to see what it looks like knit up so hope you have a great rest of your week guys keep on trucking talk to you later bye